Being back in the studios again, it's been really amazing, especially after having to dance in confined spaces. It's nice being back in the class with your classmates and the teacher. Being with my friends and having a live teacher and the piano, it's a lot different from being on Zoom. I get so much more out of class in like a full studio and I can like move, actually move. Oh my, let me, let me say, this pandemic has changed um, so much. When we had the first wave of pandemic in the last March, we didn't know what to do. It was all a shock for everybody and it was like, oh my God, how do I do class at home with no space? The newness of the platform, Zoom, not being able to be face to face with the students, it was very disconcerting many times. But I think the second wave, like this uh, extended winter break, we were more prepared. Before the pandemic, I never thought um, ballet class could happen over Zoom. But in a small space, you'd be surprised how much we could do. When you take what you're used to doing in these big rooms and put it into your living room in your kitchen or something where you're kind of crammed into a corner on a four by four, it's really easy to become very, very small. I use the image of the Leonardo da Vinci the human being in relation to the square and the circle to talk about dancing your size, making, making sure you're taking up your full space. A few things I definitely need to, to readjust is, for example, I could do a little bit longer bar than I usually do. And the center, a lot of a small footwork and releves combined with point exercise. So we actually sometimes have found two hours is not enough. We have added some conditioning and like yoga classes to keep us in shape and to keep um, stamina up, which is really difficult being at home. One of the things that, that does, I think, suffer from online training is jumping because you can do a little bit of it but because of the different floors, you don't want to injure a student. So you'd have to really, really curtail the jumping. So once we get back into the studio, that's a lot of where the focus is. One of the good things on online, which the young men in my class have discovered, because we couldn't have a lot of space, we could really work on their balance. And they've noticed that this week back in the studio, their balance has improved a lot. There wasn't space that we could, you know, fall everywhere. So I think that actually um, helped us, you know, have that elongated sense in our body and stay on the same spot. Especially the female dancer, it's really important to the point work training, but if they really floor slippery, then they couldn't do it. So instead of doing that point work or jumps at home, uh, I did uh, some more relevant, like your heels up and down so that they can strengthen their feet and the lower leg. Um, the hardest thing is when sometimes um, either you can't hear the music sometimes because it would chip out or the computer would freeze or um, everyone else has different timings because of the leg on Zoom. I have a little brother and he's, he didn't really know what was going on when I was doing class, so sometimes he would come by. And I have a dog, which was actually kind of fun when he came by. I was using like a um, closet rack for a bar, so we had to get creative, but it worked in the end. There's no coordination between the little cells on the screen, so therefore you never sure whether anybody's being terribly musical about what they're doing because they're all hearing the music at different times and you don't know also what your screen is doing to them. Dance is taught in a group. When you're in the group, there's the energy of others. The energy of others just moving to the music with you and that and, and, and the music in the room, which fills up in the room. That's not the case online. Some of the corrections are very easily delivered to them when it's face to face. I could, um, I could uh, give them instruction while they're dancing so I could see readjustment right away. Over the Zoom was something that 
I could not do. I had to wait for the exercise to finish because it would be my voice over the music. By the time it got to them, the whole exercise is finished. It's finite. I really think there's only so far you can go with Zoom and then you've got to get back in the studio. And, it, and to, to do it for a really long time is not a lot of fun. And uh, I think the kids are just amazingly courageous to, to keep at it because I think it's, it may be easier for them than it is for me. I have just started, uh, thankfully, being back in the studio with them, and they're, they're really in very, very good shape. We're more trying to uh, get them to feel the sense of movement again. At the bar, their skill was so improved, and the balancing skill is uh, so much better than before winter break. I'm so thankful that we have technology, because the thought of not having it would have meant that the students would have had to train themselves or maybe we could talk to them on the phone and say Tondu or but having these platforms like Zoom has been a godsend. One thing is like with online classes you have to make sure you're staying focused if you have other people around but I was pretty good. <laughs> I personally had a difficult time with it. I just kept trying to remind myself that I should be grateful to even be doing classes. It was a period of time where I really struggled, but I gained resilience, which will help me in the future. The thing I learned was how much I love being in a studio with the students in 3D and feeling their every move, feeling their passion. You can see some of it on the screen, but it's not, it's not the same. And, and not trying to you know, compare apples to oranges, but I have to say I, I love it. It made me understand why I love doing this in the studio or on the stage. <laughs>